So team, keep it clean. It's official. Lamar Jackson told the Ravens, cut the check. And now, without an agent, without an agent, Lamar Jackson is now the, we know it's going to be temporary, but for now, he is the highest paid player in NFL history. Without an agent, might I add. Anyway, this is great, man. I'm happy for Lamar. I'm happy for the Ravens. I'm happy for us Ravens fans that just been waiting to see what was going to be next with this whole situation. I'm glad it is officially done. It's literally been years, years in the making. This process has been going on for a long time. There was a lot of people, oh, he should have took a deal a long time ago. He should have signed that. He should have signed this. It's done now. He got his bread. And, and let's just look at, we don't have all the details yet. Not all of them, but looks like it's a deal worth up to $260 million. Worth up to, we know it's not fully guaranteed, so it's worth up to $260 million. Uh, and he has $185 million in guaranteed money. Uh, Jalen Hurts, his guaranteed money was $179 million. So he gets six mil more guaranteed than Jalen Hurts. Uh, so that would break that record. And then, of course, his average per year. We know a guy who was kind of a legend for the Baltimore Ravens, I would think. That guy being Ray Lewis. Lamar Jackson's average per year is $52 million. $52 million. This is nice that it's done. And it's a five-year deal, by the way. This is such a beautiful thing. Eric DaCosta. Ooh, Eric DaCosta. Boy, I got to give a big shout out to Eric DaCosta because I certainly had my doubts. And we shared them a lot on here about, and we, we were just talking about it in the last video, where the, the last video was about this deal almost being close to being done, but now it's officially done. But we certainly had our doubts about this thing being done. We, we had our doubts about this deal getting done. I just and, and we also had our doubts about just the way that the Ravens were moving. We, we had our doubts about the philosophy. We talked about how the Ravens, we just felt like they needed to really change their philosophy. The way that they moved on offense, the way that they moved in the front office. They really needed to update things. And it took them a while to get here. And it, se it seems like. Some stuff, we still got to see it on the field. But it's saying they, they moved on from Greg Roman. And shout out to Greg Roman, by the way. Because let's not act like Greg Roman was this bad, terrible offensive coordinator. He did have his hiccups and mistakes. He did have his things that, that he struggled with. And I, I felt like the Ravens should have pivoted years ago. But we're here now. But they, they finally moved on from Greg Roman. And now they brought in Todd Munkin. That's a, a big thing with the philosophy right there. Because with Todd Munkin, they didn't bring in somebody who was coming off of losing seasons wherever he was at. And not saying that's just because somebody's coming off a of losing season, they can't be successful. But they brought in somebody who was doing their thing where they, they, they were projecting up. The arrow was going up because he was coming off of two national championships. They said, oh, no, no, come, come be our offensive coordinator. They brought in a wide receiver coach who just came from winning the Super Bowl. With wide receivers, because he, he was a wide receiver coach. So who, who, who better to bring in to help with that? And then they topped it off with the personnel, with signing Odell Beckham Jr. and paying him significant money. That's something the Ravens never do. And apparently, we still waiting on it. We still waiting on it, but apparently... They trying to get DeAndre Hopkins as well. That is to be determined. But they were also trying to get their quarterback, and now they got him. Lamar is locked up. Let, 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 let's, let's hear what, uh, what Lamar had to say uh, when he checked in with everybody. You know, for the last few months, there's been a lot of he say, she say. Mm -hmm. A lot of nail biting, a lot of head scratching <laughs> going on. But for the next five years... It's a lot of flock going on. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go, man. Can't wait to get there. Can't wait to be there. Can't wait to light up m &T for the next five years, man. Let's get it. This is so beautiful, man. It's a beautiful thing. 
It's, it's a beautiful thing that it's real now, man. It's real. Now we can, like the, the, the story came out yesterday, the day before yesterday, that the 49ers, they had checked in on Lamar. It didn't say that it was anything serious, anything like that. But we had previously heard, what if he traded to the Dolphins? Well, what if the commanders swoop in? You know, they ain't got a quarterback. The, earlier this offseason, it was the talk about the Falcons were in talks heavy with the Baltimore Ravens on a trade for Lamar Jackson. That was right before free agency started. Then there was rumor that the Colts, they may think about adding Lamar Jackson. There was a lot of rumor. Then the Patriots, the rumors about that too. There so many different rumors that were going around. But now we ain't got to worry about none of that. None of it. But then something that wasn't a rumor, something that really shook a lot of us, the public trade request. And that public trade request, shout out to my sports update for bringing this up, but that was li literally one month ago from today. It was on March 27th, where Lamar dropped that tweet, dropped that thread of tweets. Well, he said, hey, on March 2nd, I requested to be traded for the Baltimore Ravens. They didn't value me. They didn't meet my value. And he just said everything. Thank you to the fans. Da -da -da -da. Gave us that whole thing. And I was like, oof. It's... Wow. That was crazy. I, I, I thought it was going to be a wrap. I thought that was it. But literally, exactly one month later, on April 27th, he signs a long-term deal to remain with the Baltimore Ravens. And I love this. I love this. It's done. It's done. The negotiation process has been a tedious one. But now... What Lamar Jackson and his camp have under their belt is experience. They have a lot of experience. And I know there's been a lot of back and forth. Oh, should Lamar get an agent? He needs an agent. He needs to get an agent. Da, 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 da. And they are definitely pros to getting an agent, pros to having an agent. They are also cons as well. It's pros and cons with anything. But he did it. It's done. Now they, they now have this under their belt. And no one can ever take this away from them. Lamar Jackson, without an agent, negotiated a deal to become the NFL's highest paid player in history. And again, we know that history is going to change real soon with, with Joe Burrow, with Justin Herbert. We'll see. I don't know. But with Joe Burrow, it's definitely going to change. And Joe Burrow is going to be getting paid after Lamar Jackson. He's going to get paid more. So you just got to wait on that now. But he did it. He did it. And boy, that's a lot of bread. That's a lot of cash. Uh, Lamar Jackson came into the league, was doubted, still doubted by some people. Well, it, it's been less doubts, but still doubted by some people. Doubted that uh, people doubted that he could play quarterback on this level, on a professional level. Um, and there was some time, like especially his rookie year, Ravens didn't really help because they just had him out there as a gadget player, have him come out there, the read option, and he would only run. They would not have him throw the ball like Harley at all. Um, but then in 2019, that's when things really changed. And obviously you hear about it so much, but, and I know some people are tired of hearing about it, but I think the reason why it's spoken about so much, the 2019 season is because it was historic but it was like he, he won not just an MVP of the league, but a unanimous MVP. But it was clear cut. There was no like, oh, well, no, Lamar shouldn't get it. No, 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 no. Everybody was on the same page. Lamar Jackson is the MVP. And for somebody who he won an MVP, obviously, as a quarterback, but for somebody who was told you should play wide receiver, you should play running back. You can't be a quarterback. You're not a quarterback. Somebody who was told all those things over and over and over to have went out there in the national football, to be playing football at the, the, the highest level that you can possibly play it at and be voted the most valuable player without a doubt. That's big. That's big. So when, when you hear it brought up in arguments, whether it's amongst fans, amongst friends, amongst analysts, amongst people in the media, amongst whoever, when you hear that brought up, 
I know some people are like, oh, 2019 was so long ago. And it was a little while ago. Don't get me wrong, but it's still extremely significant what was done and who he did it with. When you look at the team that was around Lamar Jackson, the offensive players, is, is significant. It's extremely significant what he's been able to do. The winning percentage is crazy. It don't make no sense. It's insane. But Lamar Jackson has been, he's been a great player, obviously. Been a phenomenal player. And I'm glad that the Baltimore Ravens are keeping that phenomenal player. <laughs> I'm glad he ain't going nowhere, man. I'm glad. This like, this is great, man. This, this is great. It just, it's great that it's finished. Now, moving forward um, from Lamar Jackson, especially if they get DeAndre Hopkins, too. Oh. Something that we've been talking about on here for years. For the Ravens, we just we want them to make Lamar Jackson's job easier. Make his job easier. Because you, you ask him to do so much. You ask him to do a lot. Top passer, obviously, is he's starting quarterback, but top rusher every year. He ain't got to do that. And hopefully in this new offense with Todd Munkin, he ain't got to be that. Hopefully, of course, ain't saying, oh, Lamar, don't run. No, 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 not saying that. But he ain't got to be the, 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 the lead in Russia. You got a J.K. Dobbs. And hopefully he'll be healthy. Hopefully everybody be healthy. Lamar, too. Because obviously Lamar missed some time over the past couple of years. But hopefully they can all be healthy, man. Everybody. That would be great. I know it's NFL, it's football, so injuries do happen. We get that. But if the Ravens could get a healthy squad, and keep a healthy, healthy squad the whole year. Oh, man. And I know not every single player is going to be healthy, but majority, majority of them could be healthy for the whole year. Oh, what? Oh, the sky would be, past the sky would be the limit, man. It really would, man. It really would. Um, but now, with an Odell Beckham Jr., with a Rashad Bateman, with a Nelson Aguilar, with a Mark Andrews, with a Isaiah Likely, with a J.K. Dobbins, with a Gus Edwards, and with a hopefully DeAndre Hopkins. With Ronnie Stanley having completed the majority of this season and now him going into his first offseason healthy, his first offseason in a long time healthy. Oh, that's, that's made such a big difference because we saw Ronnie still got it. Despite the injuries that he had before, Ronnie still got it. They obviously got to figure out what they're going to do at left guard, whether it's Pat McCary, whether it's Ben Cleveland, well, whoever's going to be. Tyler Linderbaum had a good rookie season. He had some hiccups, but he was a rookie. But overall, he was solid, man. Linderbaum did his thing. And then at right guard, you still got Kevin Zeitler. Then at right tackle, you got Morgan Moses. I know Morgan Moses was up and down, but hopefully second year with the Baltimore Ravens, it is going to be a different offense now, obviously. So things are going to change, but this is beautiful that the continuity in a lot of areas on the team, because they have a lot of continuity, but they're going to be getting a new offense. But you having continuity, you, you, you haven't been there with your brothers already. That helps because y'all already, already got a rapport. Y'all already got chemistry. Y'all already know how each other are and whatnot. That helps so much. And now you get that continuity with your quarterback. And now in the offseason, with, with you installing this new offense, now we ain't got to worry about questions no more. Oh, man, is Lamar going to show up? Oh, is Lamar going to be there? Oh, who's, what's our quarterback situation going to be? That's done. That's done. Odell Beckham Jr., he took a big risk. He, I'm sure he talked to Lamar, and he was probably thinking like, oh, yeah, Lamar, Lamar most likely coming back. He coming to the Ravens. I ain't, I ain't coming over here just for no 15 mil guarantee. Well, he probably would because that's 15 mil guaranteed. Like... <laughs> I don't care who the quarterback is. You give me 15 mil guaranteed? Like straight up guaranteed for one year? Oh, yes, yeah, sign me up. But anyway, Odell Beckham Jr. took a big risk coming to the Baltimore Ravens. But that risk is now officially paying off because he got his quarterback. And now DeAndre Hopkins could be there too. It's funny, I I've seen some people say, man, once Giro left, oh, these receivers automatically want to start coming to the Ravens now. 
And I was like, hmm. I think it's, it's obviously deeper than Giro, like we've said for years, too. It's deeper than, it's deeper than Greg Roman. Because the receiver problem has been a problem for years before Greg Roman was even a thought of being a Baltimore Ravens offensive coordinator. But this, this year, and th- this is whether you get DeAndre Hopkins or not. Hopefully you get him. But this year is huge because this year can really shift people's perspective on the Baltimore Ravens offense. It can shift people's perspective on how this team uses, treats, and appreciates wide receivers because they matter. They matter like crazy. And it sucks that it took the Ravens five years with Lamar, over five years with Lamar. Well, really four and a half because he ain't started his whole rookie year. But it took the Ravens about four and a half years to realize how much they matter how important they are, but better late than never. And and this shift can really help the Baltimore Ravens just moving forward in in general. It can really help uh, in future years too. This this is not just about this year. It's not just about this year. It's about the future as well. So Ravens, this is great. I love, we love it. We love it. Um, Eric DaCosta, again, amazing. Um, amazing that he got this done, that they got this done. I, 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 I love it. I really do. Uh, we talked about how this, going into this offseason, this was going to be Eric DaCosta's biggest offseason ever as a GM. Biggest. The biggest issue, or well, the biggest task that he had to complete it's now officially done. One of the other bigger tasks that he talked about, he talked about revamping the wide receiver room. You already got Odell. You got Nelson Aguilar, too. You mess around and get DeAndre Hopkins? Oh, yeah, you completed that task. It will be completed, for sure. But this is good, man. This is good. Um, I love it. So, so now, what these Ravens need to do because something else that we talked about on here for a long time that I felt like, and I, and I said this so many times, that I did not feel like the Ravens, like if, if, if I wanted Lamar to stay, I always wanted him to stay, but I was still scared and did not feel like the Ravens would ever bring the best out of Lamar Jackson because of the way, because of their philosophy. We've seen a shift in philosophy for the approach to wide receivers, and that could still continue to change. They brought in Todd Munkin, so the shift could be on offense too, but again, seeing is believing. I talked to, to Coach yesterday, Sip to Tally. I was talking to him, called in on his uh, live stream. And I asked him, I said, with or without DeAndre Hopkins, what do you feel like Todd Munkin brings to this offense? What do you feel like he brings? And Coach said adaptability. Being able to change up what you do. If one thing ain't working, being able to switch to something else. Just being adaptable, and that's so important. It's so important. Everything starts with coaching, but then it, it obviously trickles down to the players too. Because a coach could call the perfect play, but if the players don't execute, that's on them. So that's on Lamar. That's on the offensive line. That's on the receivers, the tight ends, the running backs, everybody. So this thing, it, it got to go hand in hand. That's why when the offseason starts, the offseason workouts and all that, it's, in my opinion, even if it's not mandatory, with it being a new offense, I think you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna want everybody there. And obviously the Ravens, I'm sure they want everybody in attendance. Not everybody shows up. Not everybody has to show up. But you're gonna want everybody in attendance, man. As much as many people as could be there as possible. Because if you're installing something new, then it, it, it could take some time. It could be some adjustments. But man, this We'll worry about that when we get there, even though that is like literally around the corner. But this is great, man. This is great. So I'm happy that Lamar Jackson is staying with the Baltimore Ravens. And like we ain't got to worry about no more. We ain't got to say it no more at the end of the videos officially after today. Now we no longer have to worry about Lamar Jackson being out. I love you.